So we left Cardiff with kind of just a postcode and got to this random industrial estate where there was no sign. Uh, just drove around for Yeah, a while. just literally <laughs> spent 15 minutes trying to find this place. And then suddenly we found... The mural. A mural on the wall. We drove around the corner and found a few barrels, so we thought that was a hopeful sign. Mm. And then after a few minutes... Um, Rob Higgins. Right. Yeah. MD of Eccentric Gin. So he um, kind of unlocked these, like, wooden gilded doors to show us in and I mean it really does live up to its name it's a kind of it is eccentric <laughs> mm, it's fantastic in there yeah and he just spoke from the get-go didn't he yeah so it was great you got to bear with us because the sound gets a bit tinny when we're in the actual distillery but I think it's worth it yeah and we couldn't really pin him down but he was so good because he was actually just a real laugh he just wanted to tell us loads he was really enthusiastic and passionate and it was like really fun for us yeah So all four gins are different with a very specific recipe that's specific for that gin. All right, so the botanicals we use here are, that was for a gin called Madame Geneva, okay? Now, Madame Geneva is a gin that we don't actually let rest. We don't actually leave it into a barrel. It's a traditional gin, so as soon as we distill it, we let it rest, let it settle, and then we put it into a bottle. Lindbeck is a gin that once we've distilled it, we let it rest, but then we put it into a barrel, which is a burgundy barrel, so we get the infusion of the burgundy flavour, the berry flavour, the, the, the richness of the wine. It doesn't actually flavour the gin, but it just infuses it with a little bit of flavour, and certainly with a little bit of colour, which actually comes out of the tannins, out, out of the wood. There's another gin, when we distill that, it's called Young Tom. Yeah. And we actually put that in a barrel which has been used for storing whiskey. So when you drink Young Tom, you've got a very much a, a, they're all specifically gins, so you've got a gin flavour at the front of the palate, and then afterwards you get a rolling sort of malty, woody flavour, which is a bit of a whiskey stuff to keep going on. Um, very unusual gin, a famous chef, Anthony Wall Thompson, approving our gins for the Hilton Hotel, tried our Young Tom gin, and he said, he said I've never tasted a gin like that before in my life, and he said, and I would call that a clear bourbon. A bourbon, yeah. there we are. Yeah. So, what you're seeing here are botanicals where we've actually soaked them in our alcohol. So that's juniper berries. That's it, well done. And bay leaves. Bay leaves, really? Yeah. Oh, uh, I was thinking of bolognese, I think bay leaves, <laughs> not gin. <laughs> now we're actually going to start growing our own juniper here in South Wales. Do we have the right climate for that here? In, juniper is indigenous to Northern Europe. And we used to be juniper bushes everywhere in the UK. Oh. If we can pick our own juniper, that's mean it's going to get a fresh much fresher, sharper mm. gin taste to our gins, as opposed to using the, gin, the juniper that's imported from Croatia, which tends to be dried. And then it all can right? be truly Welsh. Absolutely. <laughs> it's all about provenance, you know, yeah, and we want to, we're one of the few Welsh distilleries, uh, we're probably the only distillery in South Wales, but we're, we're trying to source as much as we can from Wales. When we go to a gin tasting session, there's something within our range of flavours that suits everybody's palate. Everybody, palettes. yeah. Mm. So whether it's... Um, Cardiff uh, Dry. Yeah. <laughs> Cardiff Dry, you know, is a bit of a no-brainer. You know, London Dry has been on the market for years. Edinburgh Dry, Dublin yeah. Dry, Plymouth Dry. Yeah. They've all got it. All right, so now we feel that we've put Cardiff on the gin map. Quite, it's quite unique because the range of botanicals that we use for Cardiff Dry and the system we use, we put that out on social media. I said to people, like, what do you want in a gin? You know, so it's a real, I wouldn't say it's a people's gin, you know, it's a, going a bit, bit far, but I yeah. said, right, what do you want? And it's selling very, very well. We did a distillery. Now we're not distilling at the moment, so we haven't got the fans on, because obviously the potential for inflammable vapour to be in the atmosphere. After we've macerated our botanicals in our alcohol, Leave them for about 36 hours, so all the flavours of the botanicals are soaked into the, into the alcohol. Pull the botanicals out, then we transfer the alcohol into the still, and then heat it up okay. and start to distill. Now, all this fancy fine point from the top yeah, looks, looks like something like Doctor Who, you know, very much Cyberman. And it's great for distilling because every 20 minutes you have to put your finger underneath there <laughs> and you taste it in gin at 80% proof. <laughs> So after we've distilled it, which can take anything up to 18 hours, we then transfer the high proof alcohol into one of these vessels over here. It's not because we've got four vessels, and we do four different gins. So each one holds a specific gin, and then we'll swirl it out. Now this one is holding about 
220 litres of calm dry gin. So, for the gin, okay? So, have a bar today, that's a good thing. Now, 220 litres at 80% proof. Okay? Now, calm dry in a bottle is 37.5% proof. So, how do you kind of. Um... It's diluted. And what we do is we're called cutting down. Mm -hmm. So we take our 80% gin, add water to it, chest, check the specific gravity of it, okay, with a hydrometer. Yeah. Uh, you guys familiar with hydrometers? Right. <laughs> show you the hydrometers, don't Educate worry. Us. Yeah. It looks like a thermometer. And it's got a lead weight in it. Okay? And you drop that in water. And like you can you can ascertain the specific gravity of the liquid. And where the level of the liquid falls. We take that reading, take the temperature of the liquid, we pick our little book, like a logarithm book, <laughs> and we have a little look and say, right, what's the temperature, what's the reading, and that'll give us the alcohol content of that liquid. <laughs> so, a combination of biology, cookery, chemistry, and plumbing.